your hands with us on this one. Say, who opens Amen. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus this morning. 
Good morning, everybody. Morning. Oh, come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Godly morning, everybody. The sun is shining. I know it's a little hot. I know it's a little hot. But it don't compare to what it could be. Oh, oh. Eh, eh, eh. Somebody hear me? Somebody hear me? Y'all yo, marinate yeah, on yeah, that yeah. one. You catch it. You catch it. You catch it. Mm. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Fresh Visions Community Church right here located at 1551 J. David Jones Parkway in the great city of Springfield, Amen. Illinois. Amen. Amen. Where we praise the Lord, yes. the one true living God. Yeah. Not Buddha, not somebody that died and ain't never coming back, but the one true God, amen, yeah. the creator of the universe, and we come to give him praise. So, buenos dias, el todos. Bienvenidos. We welcome you into the house of the Lord, and we greet you in the name of Jesus, who is the Savior, who is the sanctifier, who is the giver of life, who is the Messiah, who came that you have a right to the tree of life. Yeah. And all he says is just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and it shall be done you shall be saved not yeah. you might be saved not you could yeah. be, be saved not yeah. one day you be but that you shall be saved yeah. amen yeah. amen it's a great day yeah. in in fresh visions community church today we got a lot of stuff going on so let's get right to it we will have communion uh, later on afterwards and uh, we will be recognizing graduates as well and then after service there will be some kind of concert, some kind of little, little old concert that happens every year. And it's been happening for about 50 years. 51. <laughs> so this will be 51. It's been happening for a long time. Can we give a hand to the Jones family that will be in concert this afternoon here? 51 years. And I don't know how she does it because she's only, what, 42? Wait, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 40 ish. Let us start with a word. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Today's word is coming from Philippians 4, verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to be, be abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word is blessed. Amen. Amen. May we be blessed by the hearing, the doing, and the understanding of God's most holy word. Let us bow for a word of prayer. O oh, gracious and holy eternal God, our Father, creator of the universe and giver of every good and perfect thing, we come to you this morning, first of all, to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for a day that we have never seen. A day that we will never see again. Thank you for the breath of life that you have breathed into our bodies. We thank you, O oh God, for being a God of love. We thank you, O oh Lord, for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us, great and small. Thank you for the little things that we don't even take notice of because you've been so good. And we just kind of take it for granted that you're going to bless us with another day. Or that you're going to bless us with eyes that see and ears that hear and tongues that work. We just thank you, oh God, for giving us every ability, every gift, every skill, every talent, every wisdom that we have asked for. And we just thank you for the opportunity thank you, oh to ask for what we need. You've already given it to us, but you still said ask. You said ask. You said to ask. So in obedience, we ask. You said if we ask, it, it'll be given. If we seek, that we shall find. And if we knock, the door shall be open. So we ask right now. We seek and we knock in your precious name, in accordance to your word. And we give you an in advance, hallelujah, thank you. Yes, yes, God. Because you said you would do it. Yes. And we believe what you say because you're not a God. You're not a God that would lie. You're not like man. So we just praise you for that. We thank you for the, the strength that you have blessed us with in our minds and in our bodies. We praise you, oh God, for being a God of greatness. Yes. A God that we can stand in awe of because nobody can do what you do. 
We thank you, O oh Lord, for Jesus. And we stand and hold up the blood-stained banner. We, we thank you, O oh Lord, that we can bring back to our remembrance of who you are and who we are in you. And so we thank you that the blood that streamed down over 2,000 years ago is still working in our advantage. Thank you, O oh Lord, that we can point people to the cross, not to us, but to the cross. And as it said, the finished work of the cross. We ask that you would whisper in those ears that don't know you, O oh Lord, that there's still room at the cross. Those, O oh Lord, that are burdened in their spirits and in their souls, bless, O oh Lord, so that they know it had to be you, not in themselves and not unto them, but unto you, O oh God. We ask right now that you would bless the sick, bless the afflicted, bless those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. And we pray that you would bless this service, Lord God, that you would shine down and shower down and fill this temple like a cloud back in the Old Testament that folks can't even see physically, oh Lord, but spiritually we know that you have filled us. And when we are filled with you, nothing else can take that place. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. So we ask that you would bless this service as we go forward. Bless the man that's going to bring the bread, that's going to speak the word. Touch his heart, his mind, his body, his spirit, his soul. Bless him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Decrease him and increase you, oh Lord. And then give your people eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to be receptive of what thus saith the Lord. We will be careful, O oh Lord, to remember to give you all the honor, you all the glory, and you all the praise as you place out our place to walk, O oh Lord. And may we walk in the way that you have set forward for us to do. Let us hear your word for us. Let us take it in and digest it. And let us be obedient, O oh God. Forgive us for our sins in word and thought in deed and omission or commission. Forgive us where we may have caused another brother or sister to stumble, O oh Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord. And, and, and we just thank you for being a God who keeps his word and saying that our sins are forgiven if we just repent. And that you will throw them as far as east is from the west. We thank you, O oh God, for that dimmest power that you left with us, O oh God, when Jesus returned back to you and now sits on your right hand, interceding on our behalf. We thank you for that dynamous power, O oh Lord, that we can pray and that we could, we could move mountains, O oh Lord, and that we can say, mountain, be thou removed and it will be cast into the sea because that's the power that you left with us. So we thank you right now for dominion, O oh God. We thank you for being people of dominion. We thank you that you are with us no matter where we are and that all we have to do is reach up, reach out and ask and seek and knock. So we thank you, O oh Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We ask that you would bless the VBS that's going to go forth this week, O oh Lord. Be with us, O oh Lord. There will be some that will come that have no idea of who you are. Let them leave out rushing and saying, what must I do to be saved? And being a great example of your love. We ask all these things. We, we, we pray this prayer and we give you glory. It's in the precious name of Jesus, who is the Savior. And every heart said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Thank you. 
people. <laughs> uh, to be careful though. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Can we thank the Lord for his goodness? Can we thank him for his love and his mercy? And we are excited about what God is doing and how he's doing it. Amen. God works through people and, and, and people uh, have the option of following God's plan or detouring and going in the wrong direction. And can I just share this in advance? It's always better to follow God's plan. Yeah, it's always better, it's always better. So I praise God on this day and I thank God for each of you. Thank God for our visitors and friends that are with us and those who are tuning in um, online with us. Thank God today we celebrate our graduates. Amen, come on, thank the Lord for our graduates and so we praise God for the families that are with them that celebrated with them on yesterday I had the opportunity to to go to uh, a couple of the graduations and just to see them uh, go across the stage or march out of the building and family celebrating with them uh, it's, a, it's a great accomplishment and it's a great milestone amen but it's not the end Amen. We want you to continue to follow God's plan and God has even greater things uh, for your life. And so anyway, you'll hear more from our uh, education uh, team later on with our graduates, but we will be uh, sharing some things that trying to encourage our graduates. And if you tune in, 
uh, or lean in just a little bit, it may be something for some other folks that, that, that are not graduating or have not graduated. Maybe something for some other people as well. Let's pray together as we prepare to go before God. Lord, we give you thanks and we celebrate your goodness. None like you, O oh God, in all the earth. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this season, O oh God. Thank you, God, that we can celebrate and we can acknowledge and recognize the things that are being accomplished and have been done. So, God, we celebrate you and we know that you are the one who gave your life on our behalf. We are grateful, God, for the third day resurrection. And now, God, speak to your people, minister as only you can with clarity. Let there be joy but also let there be conviction. Let there be change. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. And God, we acknowledge, we admit, we confess our faults and our sins. And we know that sin separates us from you, O oh God. So thank you for bringing us back into the right fellowship, that your people will be blessed, and that we'll be edified and you glorified. The people of God said hallelujah. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So today I'm looking in the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers. Uh, if you old school, you got a Bible, you go Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. If you're more uh, tech uh, with your, 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 your scriptures, you just hit a button and, and, or, or type in Numbers. Numbers 13 is what we are looking at today. Numbers 13, and I'm using for a subject before we uh, read the scriptures, graduating from a grasshopper to a giant mindset. Right. We, we're graduating from a grasshopper to a giant mindset. And, and we're in Numbers 13. I think we need to come down a little bit in here, Lindrick. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Numbers 13, we'll read in verses 1 through 3, and then we'll jump down to verses 25 through 33. Numbers 13, 1 through 3, and then verses 25 through, excuse me, 26 through 33. Should be 26, that's what I'll be reading. No, 25, 25, excuse me, 25 through 33, so thank you. Numbers 13, 1 through 3, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord, yeah. all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Jump down with me to verse 25. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Verse 28, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites, Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then, verse 30 says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Yeah. 31, but the men who had gone up with him said, 
We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Yes. Verse 33, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants uh -huh. and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Yes, sir. Graduating from a grasshopper to a giant mindset. We are great, we're grateful. We are grateful for the students and all that they've learned. And sometimes uh, the teachers don't realize what they have learned or what they know or what's going on in their life. Um, I'm told of a teacher that gave a group of fourth graders a quiz and one of the math questions it says that in January, J Jimmy could lift 30 pounds. In February, Jimmy could lift 60 pounds. In March, Jimmy could lift 90 pounds. And the question was, what was the total that Jimmy lifted? Another little fourth grader responded on his test Jimmy is on steroids. <laughs> so you never know what's going on in the minds of our students. <laughs> One of the most intriguing and historical events in the Bible centers around 12 spies being sent out by Moses to investigate a land Listen to this, that has already been promised to them. It's been promised, but God wants the people to carry out the process. And so he instructs Moses to send out 12 spies to investigate, to check out this land. Numbers 13, 1, spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel. Yeah. One could argue with God and even pose the question, why do they have to go spy out the land if you, God, has already given the people the land? Uh -huh. Certainly there could be varying responses to such a question. But one thing to keep in mind is that many of God's promises, some of you've heard this words, they are conditional. They're, they're, they're conditional preachers. In other words, I'm giving you this promise based on the condition that you carry out the things that I instruct you to do. I don't release certain promises until certain conditions are met by you and me. So in other words, some promises are held up because we haven't met the basic conditions that God has instructed. And hey, here's the other part. God doesn't give us things to do that we don't have the ability to carry out. I, I wish somebody would hear me. He's not going to instruct you to do something that he hasn't also empowered you to carry out. However, our minds have to be in the mind, have to be un, in tune with God yes, that I'm willing to trust God yeah. with my limited abilities, with my limited resources, with my limited knowledge. I trust a God who's in control of everything. Yeah. 
And if God has empowered me and has instructed me to carry out something, it's up to God to open the doors. It's up to God to provide the resources. It's up to God to bring it together. I'm just instructed to walk in obedience. I wish somebody was praying with me today. So in other words, his promise is fulfilled based on the conditional response or the actions of the people in which the promise is given. When and if the people follow his guidance, then his promises will be fulfilled. Keep in mind, keep in mind that here it is, the people, they've been delivered from the Egyptian bondage. Israel, they have crossed the Red Sea. They, they have, 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 have uh, seen what God has provided for them. They are certainly familiar with struggles and pain and suffering. And perhaps some of our graduates feel that they have been delivered from bondage. Whoo, we're out of school. <laughs> we're, we're, we've been delivered from struggles, pain, and suffering. Yet God provided and he protected you as God provided and protected Israel. They never missed a meal, for God provided manna from on high. (laughs) Manna means, what is it? (laughs) Whatever it was, it was sufficient for them while they were in the wilderness, amen? And and some of us know what it means to go through struggles. Some of us know what it means to go through heartaches and the challenges that comes with life. But we've learned to say, God, however you bless me, I'll be satisfied. (laughs) One thing, one thing in scripture that's clear, please hear me. One thing is clear, how we think has a great influence on where we go. Please please hear me. How we think has a great influence on where we go. We we, we can get up and and, and say, I want a job. Uh I want a better career. Uh But I know if I go out there and apply, Uh I ain't gonna get no job. Excuse me. Miss, Miss, Miss Peters, excuse me. I know, I, I know that if I go to this computer or go to my laptop and, and apply for some jobs or apply for this school or apply for this scholarship, I'm not smart enough. They're going to pick somebody better than me. Once again, how we think has a limitation on where we go. Romans 12 and 2, here's what he says on moving to the spiritual realm. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. That's the English Standard Version. Do not be conformed to this world. The world will say you can't do it. The world will tell you you are not smart enough. The world will tell you you can't go there because you don't look like the other people that have been selected. But God reminds us that greater is he who is in us that's the Holy Spirit, than he who is in the world. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So he tells us that our thinking has a great deal to do with how far we go and where we go. We have a choice to see ourselves as grasshoppers or see ourselves as giants. And I just believe that we want to see ourselves as giants rather than grasshoppers. And we don't have to remain in the shadows of living as grasshoppers. 
but we can graduate to living as giants, here it is, through Jesus Christ as our Lord. Many times we can't move to greater things, not because better and greater things aren't available, but because of how we think and how others we how, how others think that we surround ourselves with. Do you not know that we have to be careful of who we surround ourselves with? Because everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a, if it was me. Everybody has a, I wouldn't let him get away with that. Or I wouldn't do that if I were you. And trust me, we need some wise people around us, but everybody, you, you can't take counsel from everybody. A lot of people have gone to jail because they were taking counsel from the wrong people. A lot of people went to an early grave because they were taking counsel from other people. Some would say, I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't let him say that to me. Someone told me it's not a matter of what they say to you. It's a matter of what you answer to. And we don't have to answer to everything. Let me see. Let me see if I can say this and still stay on tune. We don't have to respond to everything on social media. Let me go a little further. We don't have to lack stuff just to be popular. When you know it's out of God's will, you don't have to like it. <laughs> I'm talking about that little button like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No response is a good response. <laughs> and yet you can stand on the foundation, the principles, the promises of God. Whether people like it or not. Whether it goes viral or not, just stand on the promises and the principles of God. God sees it. I'm more concerned about God liking and loving what I do, say, and think than I am about going viral. That's just the old dude that that, that I'm at at this stage, y'all. And, and, and so, so, so the 12 spies, they went out to inspect the better land, the, 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 the land that's that milk and honey, which reflects a better life, a land uh, representing a better ordained life by God. And by the way, the majority don't always get it right. 12 spies went to the same land, saw the same thing. 10 came back with a bad report. Uh Two came back with a good report. Uh For those who are in board meetings and and, and making voting decisions, all of the eyes don't always get it right. As a result of the 10 bad reports, here it is, a nation of people kept wandering in the wilderness. Uh Round and round 40 years round and round some of us used to get on the merry-go-round and just go round and round you just get off and you just drunk because you just went round and wasn't getting nowhere but just going round and you just stumbling going can you imagine 40 years just going round and round God had given them the land, but because they chose to see it as something impossible, they saw themselves as little grasshoppers. It wasn't just the 10 that suffered. It was a nation of people. Hello, parents. Hello, grandparents. Yeah. 
I'm almost done. Your decision is not just a decision that impacts you. It impacts your family. It impacts the next generation. Anybody ever heard of generational curses? Because of what Junior saw daddy doing and little princess saw mama doing. That kept circulating. They many times knew it was wrong, but because this is the way mama did it, and this is the way daddy did it. Daddy was an absentee dad, and it hurt me to my core, some would say, but they found themselves doing the same thing. Mom abandoned me and neglected my basic uh, concerns and, cons- and, 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 and 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 hurts. And even though it hurt me to the core, some would say they found themselves doing the same thing. Generational curses are real, but generational curses can be stopped. Generational curses can be uh, uh, detoured when one person makes the right decision that I will no longer participate. I will no longer be part of generational curses, but I will set a standard that me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here's the other thing, church. During the entire bad reports, there's no reference to their seeking the face of God. No reference. No reference to the God who, them seeking the face of God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. Yes, sir. In fact, they said what is prevalent even today, how we see ourselves, others will begin to see us that way also. Amen. Let me see if I can say this and keep it up here. Um, I know certain words are popular with our generation. Um, Generation that uh, a few few years back, uh, people would fight if someone called them certain things. Y'all with me? But, But now certain words are being glorified because they're calling themselves that. And it's not a positive thing. Yeah. And, and, and I wish, I wish, brothers, I, I, I wish, my sisters, that we would stop calling ourselves negative names. Yeah. 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 And then get offended if somebody call us something else. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, man. We're giving other people the license. Yeah. The permission to call us negative name and then we're giving them the authority by answering to it. If you uh, want a change of direction, it takes a change of mind. I'm not that person that I used to be. And trust me, we all been some scoundrels. We, we look good today, I know. I went and got my good uh, graduation suit today. I look good, but I, I know. I know there's some stuff that I'm not pleased with. But there come a time that we need to embrace the scripture and refuse to be conformed to the ways of the world. Hey. None of us was born, were born righteous. It took a transformation. It took a change. A change in the way we thought and think about ourselves. Because the God of the universe loves us. And he wants what's best for us. And he tells me that I'm nobody's, I won't call those words, but 
I'm someone who has been called with a holy calling. Someone who loves me unconditionally. Someone who loved me and you so much that he sent his son to the cross. And his son willingly went to the cross and was crucified for our sins. Was buried in a grave and on the third day with promise and proclamation rose from the grave. That's the God that we serve. And that's the life we should live. And we should reject those things, those sayings, those thoughts, those names that that, 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 that takes us away from God and out of the character of God. Yeah. Again, one thing in scripture is clear, how we think has a great influence on where we go. Yeah. Thank God, thank God. Yes, there were 12 spies. 10 says we're like grasshoppers. But there were two that refused to go with the crowd. (laughs) Two said, we are not like grasshoppers, but we are more like giants through the power of God. Not not with your own strength, but through the power of God. If you still got your Bibles open and it may pop up on the screen, we'll, we'll jump into the 14th chapter. 14th chapter, verses 6 through 9. Look at this, look at this. 14th chapter, verses 6 through 9. You heard about the 10 spies, the negative report. We can't do it. It's something broke. You know, we'll never do it. We are grasshoppers. They are the giants. We are the grasshoppers. They are the giants. We are the grasshoppers. Verse 6, verse 6. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephna, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. Uh-huh. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Yeah. Verse 8, if the Lord delights in us. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody need to hear that again. Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and he will give it to us a land which flows with milk and honey only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people of the perfection nor fear the, the, the fear the Fear the the, the protection, fear the land. (laughs) Let me read that again. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. I want to read one verse one more time. If, verse 8, if the Lord delights in us, conditional, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Ah. Notice, please notice their emphasis was not on the Amalekites. Their emphasis was not on the Hittites. Their emphasis was not on Jebusites. Their emphasis were not on the Amorites. The emphasis was not on the Canaanites. It was not even on Ike and Tina Turner. I know that's a bad, 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 bad joke. Their emphasis and trust was on the God who had already been a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Their emphasis was on the God who's able to do amazing and wonderful things. Their emphasis and trust was on the God who promised to be with us and to go before us. The God whose goodness 
and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. By taking on the grasshopper mindset is an insult to God and his purpose and his power. Yet, in spite of our times of short-sightedness, the fact that the earth is filled with God's glory, God's purpose will not be defeated by human failure. God will fulfill his plan. Our prayer, here it is, our prayer should be, I want giant type trust. I want giant type faith. And I reject grasshopper leftovers. We need to reject grasshopper leftovers. We need to pray, God, I believe you are a giant type God. And we refuse to accept the remnants from grasshoppers that are not the source of you. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives within us to excel, to accomplish, to succeed, to overcome through the power of Jesus Christ who is Lord. The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. Not through our strength though, but through Christ who lives in us. Please understand, please understand there are consequences with our decisions as I come to one of my closes. None of the 10 spies got to experience the land of milk and honey. Only Joshua and Caleb made it to the land of promise because they refused to take on a grasshopper mindset. It was delayed, but they were not denied. Some blessings are delayed because of some of the decisions of others and some of our decisions. But when you follow God and take on a giant mindset, your blessings will not be denied. So if you came in today with a grasshopper mindset, I pray that you have now graduated to a giant mindset and you would do giant things through a giant God who has empowered you to fulfill the things that he he has already ordained you to fulfill. Not in your own might, not in your own strength, but by the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. That's the close for real. I ain't lying this time. Praise the Lord. Bless his holy name. (laughs) We give God thanks and we give him praise. And sometimes we doubt what God can't do. We don't say, I doubt you, God. We just sit paralyzed. We just stand paralyzed and refuse to move forward. And when he has given us all the power, the ability, and the anointing, and the promise that he's with us, he will not call you to do something that he hasn't already empowered you to carry out. The first message is a message of salvation that comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Believing that Christ, God's son, died for your sins. The third day, just as promised, God raised him up from the grave. And he lives through the Holy Spirit in every believer. You are empowered. You are guided with truth. Don't have to feel like you got to be in the crowd. Sometimes it's better to stand alone when you're standing for what's right. Please hear me, graduates. Uh, There are going to be people who are going to try to take you in the wrong direction. Some will be your age. Some will be older. Some will stand in pulpits. 
Some will stand in classrooms. Some will speak with, 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 with authority. But make sure, make sure that it's solid and true yes, sir. based on the word of God. Yeah. 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 Let's pray together. If your prayer is, Lord, save me, you ought to cry out to him. Yes, yes. If your prayer is, Lord, I repent, you ought to cry out to him. Yes, God. Yes, God. If your prayer is, Lord, move me from a grasshopper mindset to a giant mi mindset, you ought to cry out to him. Father, we bless you in this place. We adore you, God. We celebrate you. There's none like you in all the earth. Lord, you are mighty and you are powerful. Thank you for tearing down strongholds. Thank you for saving. Thank you for setting free. Thank you, God, for renewed and transformed minds, which has led into renewed and transformed souls. We celebrate you, oh God, for those who are tuning in online, God, and their families are blessed, Lord. They have overcome obstacles by the blood of the lamb and we believe you God thank you for that third day resurrection we love you we honor you we give you thanks for it is in the name of Jesus the people of God said amen, amen. hallelujah and amen again come on thank the Lord thank him for his goodness thank him for his love thank him for his patience and so we allow people to make decisions, make decisions. We don't force it, but we allow people to make decisions. If you've made a decision to follow Christ, we'd like to celebrate with you. We, we don't want you to leave the same way you came. We want to be a witness with you. And if you uh, uh, need a church home, believe that this is your church home. We, we welcome you. We invite you to, you're able to come forward and we can minister to you. We can pray with you. If you need to know more about baptism, we're here, we're here. And baptism is coming soon again. So if you need to be part of that group, that team, here's a great opportunity. To know the truth and ignore the truth is sin. To know the truth and obey the truth is obedience to God. Amen. And you can receive the blessings when you obey God. I stand as a vessel willing and ready to encourage you. Will you stand with us if you're able to stand? If you're able to stand? If you're able to stand? I will be with you. Ready to make a commitment. This is your time. to commune together. We believe that this is for those who've committed themselves to the Lord and made Jesus Christ their Lord. If you have not yet made that decision, don't feel obligated to participate. 
If you have not received your elements, if you could just wave your hands and our ushers will assist you. We have some up here. This is the time that we commemorate what Jesus Christ did on the cross for our sins. Saved us. We couldn't save ourselves on our best day nor on our worst day. But Christ died in our place. The Bible declares that the soul that sins shall die. But because of God's grace and mercy, when we sin, we didn't die. He gave us new mercies today. And we are grateful for those new mercies. And every breath we take is because of the new mercies of God. I think I referred earlier that we've all been rascals or sinful people in one way or the other. But thank God for the cleansing power of the blood of Christ. Not because of us and our goodness, but in spite of us. He cleansed us washed us and chose to use us for the kingdom work of God and so we commemorate that today I just want to read a few verses from 1 Corinthians 11 before we partake together verse 23 for I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup yes, sir. you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes God thank you for these elements that we're able to share together thank you God for your cleansing power in Jesus name the bread representing that broken body that was broken for our sins let us eat together From that broken body was blood that was shed on our behalf. Let us drink together. Praise God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you. The ushers will take your elements. Even as we prepare to continue to worship, we worship in giving. It's part of our continual worship as we celebrate God. Thank you in advance for your giving. Again, we will momentarily be acknowledging and celebrating our youth. So please, thank you for continuing to be with us. Our ushers are going to come and assist those who need to bring their gifts to the Lord. For those who choose to give electronically by way of Givelify, you're able to give by Givelify. Praise God for the opportunity to worship in giving. Those who will be bringing their gifts, bring in their gifts. The ushers will guide you around. You're able to stand and bring your gift. Those who are able to willing to give by way of Givelify, you are able to give at this time. Even as you come, you're able to come.
so much for your giving. Thank God for you making the sacrifice that we might continue the work of this ministry. So praise God. Real briefly, real briefly, for those who are not aware, not aware, uh, we have part of the uh, Pastor Jerry Jones and the Fantastic Jones family uh, singers in our congregation. Amen. Amen. Got a, got a few of them. Got a few of them. And, and they are having their 51st uh, anniversary concert celebration today, right here in the same place you're here. Four o'clock. Four o'clock today. So we encourage you to come back. It's a free, a free will offering will be given, will be received, but also you're encouraged to bring non perishable items as they want to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. Amen. So what a great thing. Be a blessing to someone else and also can come and worship and celebrate and encourage this family again who are part of our church family as well. At what time? Four Four o'clock. Amen. Amen. Um, The men, the men will not meet here on this Saturday. Um, but we'll be meeting at IHOP. I think it used to be the International House of Pancakes. I don't know if they call it all that or now still. But at 8 a.m. this Saturday, I think that's the 10th, is it? Amen. So we want to be with you in fellowship. So this is the one on Dirksen Parkway, right off of Dirksen. Uh, I think it's called Sunrise, but right off of Dirksen. 8 a.m. on this Saturday. We will also uh, won't be having our normal Wednesday Bible study uh, because we'll be having vacation Bible school. Amen. Yeah. So Miss Pamela going to come and share with that. So we won't be meeting at noon nor the 6.30 regular Bible study time, Amen. but we do have something else. Amen. Praise God. Vacation Bible School. Yeah. Vacation Bible School. This year's theme is I Got This with Jesus. Amen. And so everybody is welcome. It's not just for the little ones. Everybody. We have classes all the way up to um, the adults. And uh, we've got Sister Day and uh, where's Elder? Al- there we go. And Elder Harris will be the teachers this year for the adults. And so we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we invite you to come um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 6 a.m. Or excuse me, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All right, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We are going to have a high time in the Lord. We will have fun. We will have food. We'll have fellowship. And if you're not careful, you might learn something about Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And anybody that would like to come tomorrow at 5, from 5 to about 6.30, uh, we will be decorating the church in preparation of Vacation Bible School. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Where are our our graduates? Uh, Hopefully you are making your way here up closer. We don't want to see you coming from all across the land and country. So our ed, Christian ed people, or our education people will come and take us further. Miss Beverly look like she's here and we will hear from them. But they're coming slow. Come on, man. You know, cross. <laughs> You're a football player. You can move faster than that. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. He knows how to preach and he knows how to have fun. Okay. Ooh, good afternoon. I'm glad I can talk because I, I got a tear or two in that sermon today. And like Jackie, First Lady would say, don't tear me up before I got to speak. She would say that to me all the time, like, y'all tear me up and y'all know I got to talk. Okay, I would just want to thank God for his blessings and the gifts of his grace because they have been bountiful, just bountiful. And I don't want to bore you, but those of you who know me and know I've been doing this for a few years, I think I told Pastor I was gonna do it for about three years. And I think this is my 15th year. I'm serious. (laughs) 
But, so I don't want to bore you, but you have to uh, participate in this. And just repeat, every graduation. I didn't hear everybody say that. Every graduation. Every graduation. There you go. Is a celebration. And that's it. Every, every, I believe that in my heart, and I've said this for 15 years because I was saying it before I stood in this position. Every graduation is a celebration, from the youngest all the way through. And because it means so much to us, and education can take us so far. Pastor has already said that a lot of other things go along with this, but education also helps to take us there, and we thank God for it. Now, I won't be doing most of the talking this year, believe it or not. We have a young man that I am going to introduce to you. Pastor, hold this for a minute. I need to find something so that we can, um, this is message, yes. Terrence, would you come up, please? I want you to know I'm grooming him, okay? And I think it's not, he's ready, so. And I told him that and he got to look at me. But I want to share a little bit with you about him. Terrence Jordan is an administrator for Springfield School District 186, where he has been employed for the past 20 years. He has served many roles such as teacher assistant, su substitute teacher, parent educator, teacher, guidance dean, principal, and now director of school leadership and family and community engagement. And I want you to know that he had some competition for that position. I, I didn't know who was going to get it, but my, I think my opinion mattered. I don't know. It doesn't matter because he got it because he is so, so qualified. He received his bachelor's degree from Mississippi Valley State University. Oh, stop bragging. Okay. <laughs> his master's degree from the University of Illinois at Springfield. And he is currently pursuing a doctorate in educational leadership from St. Louis University. Right. Now, so you know he was ready. So he will serve uh, the rest of the program until we get to get pretty much to the very end, and then uh, I'll step back up, okay? All right. All right, let's do this. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored, and uh, it's an honor and a privilege to stand before you to recognize our high school gradu our graduates, high school and college. I want you to know, like Pastor said earlier, this is not the end. This is just a chapter. You still have a whole book to write, uh, right? Amen. I'm sure that most of us know that education is very important, right? But I will push that as an educator for the past 20 years, I will push that and say that education is one of the most important human endeavors. Yeah. Education can change families. It yeah. can change lives. Yeah. It, can take, it can change generational poverty. So I encourage you to just continue, continue getting your education. So it's my responsibility to read to you, uh, introduce our graduates for today. So we're gonna start with Shine Hart. Shine is an honor graduate. I said honor graduate from, of, of Southeast High School. Sorry. He, was, he will attend Illinois Wesleyan University in Normal. He plans to major in business with a minor in sports management, management while also playing football. Shine is the grandson of Mrs. Pamela Hart. Next we have Willie Terrell Hubbard. Oh, your mom. We also want to acknowledge Shine's mother, Nicole Jordan. So next we have 
Willie Terrell Hubbard. Congratulations to you. Willie is a graduate of Southeast High School. He, he has enlisted in the Army and has already received some basic training at Fort Leonard Wood while attending high school. He will, he will leave tomorrow. He leaves tomorrow, June 5th, and will be stationed at Fort Utis Army Base in Fort Utis, Virginia. <laughs> Willie is the proud son of Mr. Wanda Gant. Next we have Terriana Parrish. <laughs> Terriana is a graduate of Lanfrey High School. Terriana has submitted a letter to us that the ministry would like to share with you. That's the mom. But I want you to stay here. Your daughter sent this letter and you're talking about, I can get weepy, not a lot, but when I read this letter, I thought, oh my, this is really what this is about. And Terriani wrote this herself and wanted to share it with the church. She said, it's about that time I graduated. I did it. I get to walk that stage tomorrow. I had so much doubt in myself and wanted to give up so bad and just say, forget it and drop out. But something told me to keep pushing and pushing 100%. With that being said, I'm so proud of myself. I did give up and I get to walk that stage tomorrow morning and I, I thank my mama. Terriana is the daughter of Damara Spencer Walker. Yeah. Next we have Maya Williams Sutton. <laughs> Maya is a graduate of Sutton Success Homeschool Academy. Maya is a notable ballerina with the star performances at the Muni and other actresses roles in the city. Maya will attend Illinois State University as a principal scholar and will major in dance. <laughs> Maya is the daughter of Reverend Corey and Mrs. Kassar Sutton. Congratulations. Next we have Kanice Temple. Kanice is a graduate of Lanfair High School. Kanice is scheduled to take the TEASE exam, which is the state licensing agency for the CNA program at Capital Area Career Center. Kanice plans to become a nurse. She is the proud daughter of Miss Sonia Kenny. And we have one of college, let's give all our high school graduates a hand. And I'll, I'll just say that there may be times when you feel like it's hard. There may be times when you feel like throwing the towel, throwing in the towel, but don't give up. Keep fighting. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep pushing. Never give up. You can give out, but don't give up. <laughs> All right, we have our college graduate, Jesse Harris the Four. <laughs> Jesse is a graduate of Southern Illinois University with a major in biology. And Jesse will attend USC, the University of California, in the medical program. <laughs> Jesse is the proud son of Mr. Jesse Harris III and Miss Nina Harris. So let's give all of our graduates a hand. 
And at this time, I will turn it back over to the pastor, Newman, to offer up some words of encouragement and prayer for our graduates. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, keep, no, no, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. Yep. Stay up. And uh, we are going to uh, thank you so much to our education committee. Was there, were you, anything else, Ms. Beverly? I just want to acknowledge our committee that's here. And this is Sheila. You guys, she's usually in the back. We pulled her up here and she's going to be working with the education committee. Sheila Carwell. <laughs> And I am so glad that she is with this committee. And then, of course, everybody knows Miss Marguerite Day. And she's been with the committee for quite a while. We also have a couple other ladies, Mar Marilyn Yoakum, and she couldn't be here. Uh, she had a lot of dental work done, and she said she can't even talk, and it hurts. And then Marcella is in, Marletta, Marcella Kincaid is in St. Louis with her family. And Jamil Collins had to work today. He works, I think, every other Sunday or every other weekend. So that's the committee that's made up uh, to acknowledge and salute these wonderful graduates. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. We're grateful. Um, those parents that, that can or would like to come, we want to just invite you to come. Come. I know that some are trying to do the video, but come on and stand with them. And uh, we're just going to pray, and it's going to be part of the benediction. So we just ask everyone to stand, and uh, we can come on in, and then others will be able to congratulate them after immediately after the benediction. And uh, we are grateful again. Can we thank the Lord again for all of these students? We're so proud of them and thankful for them as they pursue the military career or higher learning. Um, we want to ask God's blessings upon them. And so we just ask that if you would, those who are willing to just stretch out your hand in agreement and ask God's blessings. Father, we stand in agreement with you, oh God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, for the parents and the grandparents and those who poured into the lives of these young people. Thank you, God, for their tenacity to continue on. And even as we heard, God, through the challenges, the struggles, and even the self-doubt, oh God. Thank you, God, for being their strength and even just protecting them, God, as they walk the hallways and the streets and the sidewalks, oh God. Thank you, God, for not allowing any harm to come upon them. God, thank you, God, for protecting and providing. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be conduits, to encourage them, to let them know the importance of you and your word, oh God. Lord, we pray that they will take your word and let it be a lamp to their pathway and a light to their feet, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that they will reject any type of generational curse or anything that is inconsistent with your will or your plan. But God, we know that you know the plans for them and the plans for them to succeed, oh God. And so we stand in agreement. So God, we pray, oh God, that even as we prepare to leave this place, that you will keep us and guide us. Direct our hearts, direct our path, oh God. And Lord, as we are all called to be witnesses, Lord, let us share about your goodness and your love. We bless you, oh God. Thank you for your faithful promises. Thank you for your word, for your word is true. We give you glory, we give you honor, for it is in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. The people of God said amen and amen. Can I also say, can I also say this final thing? They also all have a Bible that we're giving them and is in their part of their package. So we want that to be a light to their feet and a, a lamp to their feet and a light to their pathway. Amen. And you're able to come and encourage uh, these young people. Amen. And the parents. Praise God. Amen.